Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, length of longest subarray with at most k frequency. So we're given an integer array nums and an integer array k. The frequency of an element is defined as the number of times that it occurs, pretty straightforward. A subarray of the input array is considered good if the frequency of every single element in that subarray is less than or equal to the integer k. And so basically we want to find the longest good subarray, the longest subarray that satisfies this condition. I feel like at this point, leak code must be running out of problems. They're at 3000 problems. I feel like we've solved this problem at least like five or 10 times, maybe not exactly like this. Uh, this is very similar to yesterday's problem. If anything, I think it's a little bit easier than yesterday's problem because I think there's less math involved. We don't have to worry about products or anything like that. Let me show you what I mean. This is the input subarray. And let's say k in this case is two, just like this example here. So if we wanted to go through every single subarray in the input array, well, there's n squared subarrays. We could check every single one of them. That would be an O of n squared solution. Now, can we do better? Well, think about this. Let's just iterate. Here's our subarray so far. We have one occurrence of one. That's okay. Our limit is two. And then we have a one and a two. Then we have a one and a three. Now we have two occurrences of one. That's also fine. So this is the edge case. If we have two, that's perfectly fine. If we exceed K, that's when we get a problem. So now let's add a few more up until this point. Now we have two copies of every single integer. Now, how should we store how many copies of each integer we have? The best way to do it is a hash map. It's one of the most commonly used data structures and it's very efficient. So for one, we have a count of two. For two, we have a count of two. And for three, we have a count of two. Every single one of these has a count of two. Now we have a new integer one. Well, it's not new. It's the same. So now we increment our count of two to three. We have three copies of one. Now, up until this point, before we got there, the longest valid window we had was of length six. But now we have a window of length seven. Only problem is it's not valid, is it? So what should we do? Well, in the brute force solution, we would say, OK, that's the longest subarray we can get starting at this element. Let's try starting from here. And then we would start going like this, keep going until we either exceed K or we reach the end of the input. And then we'd kind of do that every single time. That's N squared. We don't want to do that. Doesn't this look like repeated work? Why should we start a subarray like this one? Why do we even consider a subarray like this one, which is of length four? There's no need to. If this subarray of length six was valid, then of course this subarray of length five is also going to be valid. We will never make a subarray invalid by removing an element, right? So that's the idea behind this problem. That's why the solution of this is going to be a sliding window solution with two pointers. So this is what I mean. Once we get here, we know the window is invalid. Let's take our left pointer, which defines like the left boundary and keep shifting it until it is now valid. How do we know when it becomes valid again? Well, we have to ask, how did it become invalid? It became invalid only because the count of one exceeded two. It was three. All of the other ones were completely fine, but this one exceeded K. So what we do is take our left pointer and shift it over here now. And so then we see we remove the one, then we decrement the count of this now back down to two. Now our window is valid once again. It could have been possible though, that instead of there being a one over here, maybe there was a two and maybe the one was actually over here. In that case, we would have had to shift our pointer twice. Therefore, when you try to make the window valid again, you will need a loop, a while loop or a for loop rather than an if statement. So very similar to yesterday's problem. I hope you're kind of noticing the pattern. This is why, you know, fundamental algorithms like sliding window are really, really important. So now window is valid over here. And then we will now try to increase the window once again. And here we'll see a two. So that will take the count of two and make it three. Once again, we are invalid. We take our left pointer and then shift it one more time here. And then our window is now valid again. 
So the count of this will then go back down to two, but basically the length of this window is also six. So the largest window we were able to find by the time we reached the end of the input array was of length six. That's what we return for the output. This is a linear time algorithm and a constant space solution. So let's code this up. So what I'm gonna do is declare the result, initialize it to zero, then I'm going to return it. But before we do that, we actually have to compute what it is. We already know we're gonna need a hash map. I'm gonna call that count. Rather than initializing it to an empty hash map, I'm gonna initialize it to something called a default dict in Python. And the type I'm gonna pass in is int. So now if we were to do something like this, like if I were to say x is equal to count of uh, one, for example, this would evaluate to zero. X would evaluate to zero because the default value for a key that has not been inserted evaluates to zero with a default dict of int type. So this is gonna be convenient for us as you will see in a second. But first, let's initialize our two pointers. I'm gonna initialize the left pointer at the beginning of the array. I'm also gonna initialize the right pointer at the beginning of the array, but I'm not gonna do it like this. I'm gonna do it like this because we know we're gonna shift the right pointer by one each time until it reaches the end of the nums input array. So now, every time we see a new number at the right pointer, we want to update the count of that number like this, nums at index r, increment this by one. So this is why I'm using a default dict because how can you increment a number that doesn't already exist? Well, with a default dict, if it doesn't exist, it will initially be set to zero and then it'll be incremented to one. So far, so good. Every time with a valid window, we wanna update our result with the length of that window. So the length of a window can be computed like this, right minus left plus one. We always want the maximum window, so we actually take the max of this and the max of result, and then assign the result of this to this variable. Now, the only problem is sometimes our window might get invalid. So if it becomes invalid, how do we know it became invalid? Well, only this character, the new integer that we saw, is the one that could have exceeded k. If that's the case, let's check. While the count of that number, that integer, is greater than k, not greater than or equal, but strictly greater than k, then we will increment our left pointer. But before we increment the left pointer, we wanna get the value at the left pointer, and we want to decrement the count of that value by one because it's no longer part of our sliding window. So this is the sliding window solution for this problem. Let's run it to make sure that it works. You can see on the left it does, it's pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. You can learn all about the sliding window there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.